Hello everyone, welcome to today's current affairs session of Civilspedia. The topics we are going to see today is Pradhan Mandri Kisan Samman Nidhi and Pradhan Mandri Shram Yogi Mandan, then Rashriya Kamdenu Ayog, and then fourth topic is Women Development to Women Led Development, and last one is Jan Shikshan Sankhan. The first topic is the Pradhan Mandri Kisan Samman Nidhi. This is nothing but it is targeting the farmers. So it gives a assured income support, that is a direct income support of rupees. 6000 rupees per year to the small and marginal scale farmers who have the cultivable land of up to 2 hectares so a farmers which having a land less than a 2 hectares they will get a benefit under this scheme of rupees 6000 rupees per year as a direct income then this income will be transferred to the bank account as a direct benefit transfer and this 6000 rupees will be given as a free installment with each installment as a 2000 rupees and apart from that this scheme has a retrospective effect that is it has a backdated effect started from December 2018. So the this scheme will be get, get benefited to the farmers from the 2018 of last year. And apart from this, this one of the major objective of the scheme is to have increased this farmers income. So it will give achieve the target of a doubling the farmers income strategy. And apart from that, this scheme has been allocated in this budget of 75,000 crore to bet to give a benefit of approximately 12 crore farmers of India. So it is one of the scheme that is targeting especially of the farmers because this new India, the 75th Independence Day we are going to celebrate in 2022, in that new India achievement, we are targeting to increase the benefits of the farmers. So this having an assured income of 6,000 rupees per year is a huge amount for Indian farmers of a small scale farmers. So they will get, uh, get this amount will be get properly utilized and it will get reduce the farmer stress also. That way it will reduce this distress and then it will reduce this suicide of the farmer rate. And the next topic is Pradhan Mandri Shram Yogi Mandan Yojana. This pension, this scheme is one of the targeting this pension of the unorganized sector. So if this, if this scheme is going to enroll, then it will be one of the largest pension scheme in the world. And this scheme is targeting this unorganized sector workers who have the monthly income of 15,000 rupees. So this will benefit a huge amount of vulnerable sections of the society. Because in India, majority of the workers are from unorganized sector only. And they have very vulnerable to this health sector. If a medical income started to, medical expense started to come, then they will going to be below poverty line. So this sector, unorganized sectors who have the monthly income less than 15,000 rupees will be come under this BPL only, below poverty line. So it will benefit the below poverty line a much a lot, large level. So this scheme has been announced. So what is the difference between this scheme and already prevailing this Atal Pension Yojana is, this Atal Pension Yojana covers who have the unorganized sector who are enrolled in this national pension scheme. While this scheme will have each and every individual of unorganized sectors can enroll under this Pradhan Mandri Shram Yogi Mandan Yojana. And apart from this, if a person is contributing at the age of, started to contribute at the age of 18 years of rupees 55 rupees per month, then he will get a pension of 3000 rupees from the age of 60 years. So if a person started to contribute at the age of 29 years under this scheme of rupees 100 rupees per month, then he will get a pension of 3000 rupees from the age of 60 years. So it will benefit a lot because 55 rupees, 100 rupees not much greater level. So by having a smaller amount of contribution started at the age of 29 or 18, it will have a huge impact at the age of 60. And apart from that, in this scheme, under this scheme, government, the central government will also give an equal share at every month to this pension scheme. So it will benefit the unorganized sector worker level and it will give an attractive alternative solution for this unorganized sector workers who have a very less exposure to the social securities under that unorganized sector working. So it will benefit a much larger level of vulnerable and marginal sections of the society who are exposed to this health and other education expenses. At the age of 60, it will be crunching to this family financial crisis. And apart from this, this scheme for the allocation for the scheme under this budget is 500 crore rupees. And it will benefit across approximately 10 crore workers. And apart from that, what are the other things that has been social security things are prevailing in this uh, society so that this budget has addresses thing. So first thing is this national pension scheme in that the government has share has been increased from 10 percentage to 14 percentage. So the share if a employee is giving a 10 percentage of share to this national pension scheme then the government will give a 14 percentage of a share. And apart from this another thing that is has to be noticed in this budget is recent budget is this maximum bonus ceiling benefit for the farmers has been increased from 3500 rupees to 7000 rupees. So the bonus ceiling has been increased. So it will give benefit to the much of the unorganized as well as the formalized sector. 
and apart from this the withdrawal limit from this epfo that is employment provident fund organization in case of a death then it has been increased the withdrawal limit has been increased from 2.5 lakh to 6 lakh rupees so these are the things that is targeting of this unorganized sectors as well as the workers force in the organized sectors so that they will get the withdrawal limit and the bonus limit has to be increased and the third important topic is with respect to this recent budget is this rashtriya kamdhenu ayog this ayog means committee or commission then this kamdhenu the name itself says that it is targeting this cows so this scheme has been targeted especially for the welfare of the cows and what are the other objective with respect to this scheme is this one is to encourage to upskill this sustainable genetic upgradation of a cow resources in india cow is one of the important thing that is prevailing as a culture of a indian people so to protect the cow is one of the major objective of indian people so this scheme has been launched to protect this cow and apart from that this scheme has the objective of increase the production of cows as well as the productivity of the cows and it has another objective of how to implement effectively implement the laws that is prevailing to protect the cows as well as increase the productivity of the cows and in this budget 750 crore rupees has been allocated for the welfare of this cow and the fourth topic is this idea of new idea of new india has been increased that women development has to be changed into women led development earlier we have started to talk much concentrated on the women development now we have shifted from this women development to the focus of women led development women started to lead the development in the society so instead of developing the women now the focus has been how the women can develop the society the faces of the women has been increased much faster level so the development of the women is also happening in each and every field so what are the things that india has taken steps to increase the development of the women so that they will develop the society overall so this recently under the ujjwal scheme government has announced a 6 crore free lpg connection that is liquefied petroleum gas connections to the women led household so that the women will help will have a proper clean air uh, clean gas connections so that it will reduce this air pollution for while they are cooking so that it will uh, help to improve the health standards of the indian women because air pollution in india air pollution is one of the deadliest thing that is causing most of the death so, so to reduce this air pollution as well as to improve the health standards of the indian women this ujjwal scheme under this ujjwal scheme a free lpg connection has been given to women led families and apart from that the pradhan mantri mudra yojana that is aimed to give collateral free loans to entrepreneurs small scale entrepreneurs among that 70 percentage of beneficiaries are women that shows how it, this scheme has targeting the women led entrepreneurships because in india entrepreneurship is not taken much at level and women led entrepreneurship is not that much level prominent so by having a more collateral free loans make more women to enter into this entrepreneurship thing and apart from this the maternity leave has been increased to 26 weeks this will targeting this formal sector and apart from this there is another scheme of pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana that is targeting the pregnant women so that they will get a financial support while during the pregnancy period so it will give a financial empowerment to the women and thereby let the women not to have breaks in their career which will hurdles them while after the child bearing so this will give a financial improvement or empowerment to the women as well as it will give a much helper to increase this women participation in the workforce because in india the women participation in the workforce is reducing even after this child beginning of 30 years of age so not much women are working after the age of 30 so they are started to have a child rearing as the prominent work so by having this much amount of a financial empowerment only and financial incentives only then only women will started to enter more in the workforce element after the age of 30 so these are the schemes that has been targeting for the women development to women led development in the society and apart from this the last topic is jan shikshan sangsthan this uh, recently the news with respect to this jan shikshan sangsthan is the new guideline has been announced in this budget to have this jan shikshan sangsthan to be aligned with national skill qualification framework so that it is targeting how the skills of the indian youth can be enhanced to a much faster level so that they will give a job they will get a job even at the international par level and this scheme is not a new thing it has been earlier introduced in 1967 as a shramik vidyapeet that is targeting on the adult education and this has been renamed or this has been aligned with this jan shikshan sangsthan so that it will give a much vocational skill training to this indian youth and in 2018 this has been this scheme has been comes under the transferred from ministry of human resource development to ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship so that it will target accurately of a indian youth skilling skills sector 
and the earlier objective of this scheme was to have improved this vocational training and improve the quality of life of industrial workers not only the workers the lifestyle of the people the family as well as to increase this urban to rural to urban migrator people because these are the vulnerable people this migrator people started to live economically poor and they started to live in the slum sector and their health and other infrastructure facility will also get going to damage so by having proper schemes of to skill development then they will get a good job and thereby have a productivity of life will be increased and their quality of life will be improved so to have improvement of quality of life of the people especially this rural to urban migrators this sector this scheme has been targeting this vocational training of this migrators and apart from this this sector this scheme has also targeting to have this vocational training to non literate as well as neo literate and the school dropout people because these are the more vulnerable people who are going to unproductive or very less amount of meager jobs so they will their production of work will going to be null so in order to increase the productivity of the workers the vocational training is one of the important thing that will help them to, to reskill and upskill so that they will get a more much productive jobs so this neo literate is nothing but who are not get any proper education at the earlier part of life but in the later part of the life they get education either through formal or informal arrangements so they may they will know how to read and write but they don't get a proper formal education at the earlier period of life so this neo literate as well as non literate and the school drop out school dropouts will be much benefited under this jan shikshan sangsthan so these are the things which is contributing much targeting on this reskilling or upskilling the people of indian because we india the demographic dividend and more much more new people started to new youth started to enter into this workforce in india by not having a proper skilling then they will cannot get a job properly at indian level and at the foreign level so to have a proper employment opportunity to grab a proper employment opportunity as well as to enhance the culture of entrepreneurship more and more startups has to come to create a new jobs as per this the society demands so along with the technological dynamism as well as the demands of the society how new jobs can be created without skilling it is not possible to have a proper skilling to with this kind of a scheme has been introduced and last thing is what are the highlights with respect to this recent budget announced by the government the first thing is the tax exemption limit has been increased to 5 lakh rupees and second important thing is there was a order to create a separate department for this fisheries because this fishermen are one of the vulnerable sections of the society this climate change makes this fishermen to be much more vulnerable thing so to have a separate department for the development of fisheries will help the livelihood of the improve the livelihood of the fishermen people and um, apart from the third important thing with respect to the highlight of the recent budget is there was a set up a single window clearance for this indian film makers who will be at the par get the benefit with the foreigners and this increased budget allocation has been announced for the sectors of education infrastructure health scheduled cash scheduled right as well as the defense this shows this by having a an increased budget allocation especially to this education and health sector then only we can achieve this goals that we plan to achieve in this 2022 new india strategy so to have proper future or development of india we need to increase this budget allocation especially to this education and health sector and apart from that this scheme this budget has announced 2% interest subvention to the farmers who are pursuing animal husbandry and fisheries because these farmers animal husbandry and fisheries are the most and most small and marginal scale farmers only involving in this animal husbandry and fisheries so if they are started to have more of animal husbandry farmers then it will benefit much more lower level of people so this sub interest subvention scheme has been mainly targeted to small and marginal farmers as well as this fishery sector people so with that thing we will end today's current affairs session thank you like and comment uh, share and comment on this channel